not saying I never had doubts about, you know, certain days in between, but there's this over, you know, th there's this overriding belief system that if one other person can do it and I have that example, I believe that I can do it too. This is the Full Stack Sales Pro. What is up, Full Stack crew? Oh my gosh, today is going to be absolutely amazing. I hope you are buckled in. If you're driving, I literally hope you're buckled in while listening to this. If you're at home chilling or you're on the golf course, you're going to absolutely love today's episode. Um, today's uh, person that we are interviewing, I met in a, um, in a business venture years ago, um, and I just fell in love with this person. I technically sold them, but I didn't really have to sell them. This is by far the easiest thing I've ever done, which is was like, hey, you wanna hang out and talk? And he was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, so he embodies everything that, I mean, at least that I believe in and that we believe in in this company of what it means to literally truly be a high performer. So uh, without further ado, my man, John, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm doing good, man. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. So a little bit about you backstory real quick. And I'll just kind of tell everybody like you have this amazing, you obviously you're wearing the shirt, the superhuman, um, you know, company, then we'll get into all of that. Obviously we see a little bit of the jerseys in the background. So there is a big, amazing backstory, but I think what I love the most about who you are and what you do, and we'll get into the, like, you know, how sales has affected you and all that. But my favorite thing on like, you know, your bio is where it says never played a down of high school football and still made it to the NFL. And for, as a dad of a son who literally wants to play tackle football right now, and I'm like, well, let's just hold off as long as possible. I promise you, you can, you can still go to the NFL without playing tackle at, at an elementary junior high age. Um, that's my favorite part. But, um, obviously you've been helping high performers from high performing athletes to CEOs, to executives, to sales pros, your own sales team. I mean, literally, I don't think there's a person you have not helped become a better human being through maybe the start of being fitness, but obviously through all of that. So let's get into it. I mean, obviously you can tell all the greatness. Tell me um, just a little bit about your backstory, how you got into this and then how, what led us to where we're at today. Yeah, man. So I was a I was an athlete growing up. That's all I wanted to do. Go to the ballpark. My my memories were me and mom and dad going to baseball diamonds, basketball courts, football fields. And, you know, if anybody ever asked a young 10 year old what they wanted to do, it would be 100 percent of the time professional athlete without blinking, looking <laughs> at them straight in the eye with bulletproof yeah. confidence. Right. And, and yes, it wasn't yes, just yes. Like parents wanting me to do it. it was like, that's what I wanted to do. Fast forward to my sophomore year of high school, I had played football since I was 10 years old in Little League, and uh, I, was, I was good at it. But I went to, try, not try out, just go to the summer conditioning program going into my, that that's, uh, sophomore year. So I'm 15 years old at the time, and I walked into the weight room for the first time. The, the first time I had ever thought about lifting weights was this very first day. And when I got in there, I saw seniors, I saw some guys that were all buff and had beards and I'm like this little 15 year old kid. So I was intimidated. <laughs> and the coach was like, let's get your max outs on squats, bench press and deadlift. And I'm like, okay, that th those other two, I don't really know if I'm gonna be able to do, let's go to the bench press. And so I still remember this day, like it was yesterday, there was, there was me and four of my friends. And as we were warming up on the bench press, we put on 25 pounds on each side. So it's 95 yeah. pounds on an Olympic bar and they rep out like five reps warming up. And it like they, the spotter lifted the bar off for me and my scrawny self just gets pinned by 95 pounds. And so, you know, as a 15 year old kid, I remember that confidence just shattering like right there in that wow. moment. And all my friends were laughing at me like, you can't be serious. I can't believe how weak you are. And it was like, I was laughing with them, but I went home and I was like, Dad, I'm not playing football this year. Like I, I, I uh, this happened in the weight room. I think I'm, I'm afraid of getting hurt. And uh, I, I made a decision though. I didn't run from, from the weight room at that point. I ran towards it. And so wow. instead of like, being afraid of it, I told my dad, I'm like, hey, I don't want to go back there with my friends, but can you train me? And so my dad bought this equipment. We started working out in, 
in our house. And then we got to a certain point really quickly where he hired a, a power lifter guy at the local rec center. And for the next two years, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday night at 7 p.m., this dude just literally killed me. I remember multiple wow. times throwing up, you know, being dead. But I loved every second of it because every day that I was in there, I knew I was closing the gap between me and my friends. And I knew mm. one day that I was going to be strong and powerful. And I chased that for the rest of my life. And the whole, the whole reason I made the NFL is because over the next three years, despite not playing high school football, I fell in love with the weight room. So I got bigger, faster, stronger, felt that mental toughness, you know, start to build in, in, in my mentality. And so I walked on to a junior college team and just walked into the office and said, Hey, I haven't played in three years. I think I can be a pretty good wide receiver. At this point, I was six foot four, about 190 pounds, still kind of scrawny, but I, you know, was, I was tall and athletic. So they let me try out. And the second week of tryouts after I made the team, they, they basically sat me down and said, John, I know you're thinking about playing basketball still. I don't want you to think about that anymore. If you really work on yourself and, and learn how to play football, you have enough talent to take it all the way. And so I just ran with that opportunity. Long story wow. short, walked on to the University of Utah a year later, played for Urban Meyer, won a Fiesta Bowl, and then ultimately scored a couple of touchdowns for the, for the Oakland Raiders. My gosh, that is... I mean, the story in and of itself, like if we were just doing a podcast on ESPN or something like that, it would be like, you never give up and all of that. But to see, I mean, obviously, because I know even where you're at right now and I've seen all of, you know, not all of it, but I've seen a good front row seat to your success in business and to take that and to see now your business success and see how that was developed way back here. You know what I mean? The fact that you said, you know, yeah. I didn't run from the you know from the weights i ran to it so i mean i'm i'm blown away but okay so how did that go where, where i guess where do you feel like that resilience was that from your dad was that from your mom was that from that or was it always innate in you i i think with the most powerful the power the most powerful force in in nature is the power of belief and so my parents taught me from a young age that it was possible no matter what it was. And a lot of parents say that like, Oh, yeah. you know, anything's possible if you put your mind to it, it's a saying, but I felt like they believed it. And that, that belief was, you know, instilled into me. And then naturally where a lot of kids would, would watch people playing on TV and say, Oh, that can never happen to me. I, for some, whatever reason looked at these people, like just ordinary human beings and said, you know, they're human. I'm human. If they can do it, I can do it. And I've just had that belief from a very early age, not saying I never had doubts about, you know, certain days in between, but there's this over, you know, there's this overriding belief system that if one other person can do it, and I have that example, I believe that I can do it too. And so throughout that sporting career, and even business over the past 10 years, even when my yeah. business was struggling, it's like, well, other people are crushing it. And I believe that if they can, they can do it, I can do it too. So I think that that's just probably the most powerful thing that they gave me. I love that. Okay, so before I start asking all these questions about you know the sales side of everything, why don't you catch us up to speed now? So you go to the NFL, you play, you, you, know, you have, a, from what I know, a great phenomenal time, you learned a lot. Transition us from that moment to now where you're at in, as you know, a successful business owner. Yeah, so I played three and a half years, ultimately professionally, and uh, you know I was never I was never a star. Scored a couple touchdowns, lived a dream. But immediately after I was done, I was 27 years old, and I, I knew exactly that I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and that was to open up a performance gym where I could help young high school kids realize their dreams, like I was able to realize mine. And so the first iteration of my mm -hmm. business was a sports performance center aimed at helping junior high and high school kids. That really quickly turned into mm -hmm. Uh, uh, a business, although it struggled financially and I burned a lot of cash because I had no idea what I was doing, I was passionate about that one thing. And so even though there was multiple times where I almost had to close the doors down and did and move into smaller locations and stuff, it became this hot spot in Salt Lake City where it wasn't just high school kids anymore. It was NFL athletes flying into to mm -hmm. get trained. It was World Series baseball champions. And so I, I was I had this prestige in Salt Lake City of being the trainer to help athletes of all calibers get bigger, faster, stronger. 
But even then, I knew that it was more about the mindset and mentality than even the physical capabilities, even with the top end athletes. And so uh, for about eight years, that's what I did. And I wasn't super successful financially. I made enough to pay the bills. I was super fulfilled in what I was doing. I had a daughter. She's four now. And and um, at that time, I realized that I wanted a certain type of life. It wasn't just about, you know, me slaving away at the gym from, you know, sun up to sun down. I had to figure out how to scale my business. And so that's when I decided that I was going to create an online fitness mindset lifestyle business and scale yeah. it all over the United States. And so that was a process that took me, you know, two, three years to, to really figure out. But once I did figure it out, we've scaled pretty fast. So right now, Superhuman, my company, we primarily um, help CEOs, salespeople, really high earners, drivers dial in their fitness according to their lifestyle, their their uh, goals. And we're known in the space for getting the most ridiculous transformations um, that you'd ever see. And we've done that at scale. So it's been a fun ride. So how can, all right, we're going deep now. All right, you ready? Because I, yeah. I, I, I love your mindset. I'm, I'm such a huge fan of it. How in the world can fixing somebody's health translate to better sales or a business owner, you know, tell me, get me there. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a lot of times, like I bridge this gap between business and like fitness, probably, uh, I, I don't want to, you know, sound arrogant, but in the fitness space, it's like, I've tied those two things together very well. And that's why I attract the CEO type people because one of the most popular sayings that I believe is super wrong is how you do one thing is how you do everything. I think that that's very mm -hmm. aspirational to believe, but multiple times I've seen people crush one area of their life, but let another area lag. And so um, a lot of times people are chasing this wealth, chasing this significance, chasing this business, because that's a true unconscious value for them. And they've let their fitness kind of slide uh, at the same time. And a lot of these guys are married, obviously. A lot of these guys are like, you know, um, human nature, you know, just, just understanding human nature. They're married, they have a few kids, they live in the suburbs, drive drive a couple nice cars, take some yeah. awesome vacations. It's like, oh, why do I really need a six pack, right? And so they're, they're not, that's not a huge value for them. And basically I, I insert myself into the marketplace and I'm like, yo, dude, I don't care how much money you have. Of course I want you to crush it, but that's only half winning. True high achievers, once they elevate their fitness, no matter how good they're actually doing, and I've seen this over and over again, if someone's balling out of control in their business and their health is lagging, if we get their health up into that excellent category too, almost 99% of the time, their business grows even more. There's this, there's this mm. shift that happens in physical fitness where, where that excellence does start to translate into business if we can bridge that gap. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So for you, where you're seeing, I get, give me a couple of examples within salespeople um, or business owners where once they've learned and partnered with you and they bridge that gap, how it's translated into affecting the other areas. Yeah, like I'll give you specific examples and I'll kind of go into just, you know, more human nature stuff where I geek out about psychology. But, um, you know, like there, there's a business guy, his business was doing probably 10 mil a year, right? Not a huge business, mm -hmm. but not a not a small one. And, you know, right. stress employees, always putting other people first, taking care of family. Yeah. And all of a sudden over a year, over probably an eight month time, he goes from, you know, 220 pounds to 170 pounds, just like six packed out at 50 years old. And during that wow. time frame, though, his business went from 10 million to like 16 million. Right. And he's like, dude, John, I can't explain it. I just went all in on myself, set that uh, morning routine you had, put it in place, put it in practice. As my, as my body started to uh, get into that excellent category, my mindset even changed. And from there, like business exploded too. And so that's like a, a real life example. But what I always tell people selling, or like you said, everybody's, everybody's selling, right? Whether we're selling ourselves right. or selling a product, um, we're getting judged in the first four seconds we walk into a room. And that's mm. not like, you know, some people don't want to act like that exists, but it exists, right? We have that mechanism built in. And so when someone walks in, you're, you're constantly making snap judgments about them. 
it's not the handshake it's it's happens way before you even say hi to open your mouth right they're making me snap judgments in four seconds and so i say look i didn't create this game we're all playing it you can act like you're not going to play it however i'm going to stack the chips in my favor so when i walk into a room people are going to see excellence they're going to see standards that are above and beyond what most people have for themselves and so i'm going to have mm. this presence i'm going to have this charisma i'm going to have this confidence and it's all built around taking immaculate care of myself so that these people are more likely to perceive my status as higher than theirs therefore i win more deals yeah i mean <clears throat> you know obviously i'm not at your caliber and at your level in any ways fitness wise but what i have realized is at my time of being in sales when i'm on my eating game and when i'm on my like working out game and just let's just say active because i don't want to like box anything in but when i am taking care of myself physically mentally emotionally my sleep right which obviously falls under physical but it's like my sales have always gone through the roof now there have been times when i've been able to crush sales because if you have that talent you have that talent you know what i mean like it is what it is but what i try to tell people here when you know even our own sales guys i'm like listen i'm not telling you to drink water and walk and have a morning for me because i'm just saying you have to do all these things you can make sales without but you have no sustainability in this thing at all if you don't address the whole entire package like, it yeah, just, yeah. I mean, so I don't know, I would love for you to speak it to that. Like, have you seen that as well in your clients? Yeah, I mean, of course, people can crush it, like and not be in excellent physical shape. And so there's people listening like, hey, I'm not in excellent physical shape, but I still crush it. And my 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 invitation to all them is like, what if you did like, what if we could bring that excellence up? I think you would crush it more. But from a from a, you know, more of a scientific, again, psychological standpoint, we always, no matter if we're, whether we're trying to improve business metrics or improve relationship or improve fitness, it's ultimately going to come down to behavior, right? The behavior is going to yeah. lead to the result. However, what creates the behavior is really the root of the problem. So if we can increase the likelihood that our behavior or inputs are going to be exceptional, then we're going to get the result that we want more often than not. And so there's really, in my opinion, two different ways to dictate behavior actually one a person's emotional state is going to lead to that person's behavior so if i can see a person's emotional state i can likely predict what their behavior is going to be so then the question is how do we increase the likelihood that our emotional state is constantly motivated constantly convicted right constantly whatever mm. emotional state you want how do we increase the likelihood that we stay there well it's going to be based on one of the things is physiology Right. So physiology is going to have an effect up into that emotional state. So in the body, drinking water, taking a walk, taking care of yourself, going to the gym, getting those steps in, you're going to alter your physiology. That's going to in have a likelihood of increasing your emotional state to something better, more than negative. And then the other thing that's going to going to kind of activate that emotional state is what is in your awareness, what's in your reality based on all of your filters, because unconsciously we we're bombarded with 400 billion bits of information per second yeah right and all of that all of that is getting deleted distorted and generalized based on our internal unconscious filters which brings up our individual realities right so what we play mm. on our minds the thoughts that we have the thoughts going in our awareness combined with our physiology is going to dictate what our emotional state is most of the time and then all those micro behaviors are going to lead to an outcome that we want or not want. So I always tell people, let's stack, like again, stack the deck in our favor. Let's create an excellent physiology and then create an excellent mental fitness where we're weeding out all the negative shit and we're inputting yeah. a lot of the positive stuff and we're, we're focusing on what we want instead of don't want. And all of that leads to more sales if we're talking about sales. Yeah. I mean, and, I mean obviously we you know, sales applies to everything in life. And what you're talking about literally applies to, I mean, every occupation under the sun. In regards to your own sales team, because how many salespeople do you have right now in different roles working for you? We have we have two like full, full-time and like two part-time-ish. 
I, yeah. I wanted, and, and before I'll just tell you, like, of course we want to grow that. I had, I had more width, but I wanted to drive more depth and make these salespeople make a lot of money. So instead of having a lot of people making a little bit of money, I wanted to have a couple people full time crushing it. And so of course I want more people and we will build that. Amazing. I can help you with that. We'll talk about that. Yep. Um, apply everything that you just said, which I'm still, I'm still actually stuck on a personal emotion. A person's emotional state is going to dictate that of their belief. And I'm like, that kind of was my own moment where I just started writing it down. I was like, Oh my God, that's so good because it's so true. And I love sometimes the most simplest things are the most powerful and have the most impact on your life. Everything that you just said, how do you train that parallel with when you're talking to your sales guys and having and managing them and going through that or sales girls, you know what I mean? The sales pros. Yeah. Yeah. The good news is, is they, I, I promoted all of them from within. So they, they were superhuman members before they became superhuman salespeople. So their, their physiology is of excellence. These guys have made ridiculous transformations. And so their belief in the product is like, if, if it was one out of 10, it's a, it's an 11, right? So yeah. they have that belief because they have that transformation. They're already doing the physiological stuff. And then, you know, these guys weren't sales pros before, I had to train yeah. them into being good salespeople, right? And so, one of my one of my very first things that that I hit on every single week is the most transferable thing from me to you is my energy, right? So a lot of like we we can have a ton of objection overcomes and what to say if this happens, but at the yeah. at the end of the day, that energy and that person is going to leave with this feeling that like man, like I, I don't know what it is or what that guy even said. But like I vibe, I vibe with them, right? And so I'm always talking yeah. about the energy that they're bringing into this Zoom call, where a person's going to decide, you know, whether they want to spend four thousand, ten thousand, or sixty thousand dollars with us. Um, and and that's always number one, right? It's it's that yeah. energy transference. I'm like, what energy, like what emotional state, I should say, do you want that other person to feel when you leave the conversation, right? And, yeah. and in order to embed that in you, I have to embed it into myself. So like if I'm going to sell somebody before I, before I, you know, going to sell them and I don't sell anymore usually, but if I had to, I want that emotional state to be motivated to take action. Yeah. And so I mm, have to yeah. feel that motivated to take action or you're not going to feel it all. I, I have no chance with just words, no matter how great I am with words. So oh. first and foremost for me is always that I'm always speaking energetic state. And so if they're struggling, I'm like, what's going on in your life? Like what, like, are, is everything good at home? Like, um, how are you feeling? Because I want to know kind of where, where their life is like almost projecting the other type of person that's showing up on that other side. I mean, <clears throat> yes, yes. And yes. And yes, I totally agree with you. I, it's something that I've been, even with my own team, a couple of the teams that I'm managing right now, it's like, they're like, well, you know, a lot of the questions is always tactical. Teach me tactics, teach me tactics, 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 tactics. I'm like, Taxic, tactics are null and void if you do not have a source in which you are pulling from that is of belief, that is of conviction, that is of real energy. Because if not, th they have no punch. You could say it the smoothest, most eloquent way possible but it has no punch if there's no belief in it. And I think sometimes, especially in the sales professional world, people know when you are full of shit and they mm -hmm. know when you don't believe what it is that you're saying or what you're pitching and you, which makes you sound as most people say robotic. And for me, I'm just like, guys, you actually have to believe it. You know, which is like, I don't know if you do this with your team. It's like, look at the wins, look at the people's mm -hmm. lives. We start every meeting with wins because you have to be able to look and see why are we doing this? Because if that belief is off, please do not get on the phone. Please like, yeah, yeah. please do not. Yeah, I was just gonna say like, they, I'm like, they have to know that this is the best thing for that person on the other side. That, 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 yeah. that belief thing is super strong. And, and I think it was before we started recording, you're like, John, you know, you were the easiest person I've, I've ever sold. And the reason is because I believe that like everything that shows up in my life is a projection of what's going on internally. And people can not believe it or believe it, but I believe everything is a projection of my of my internal state, right? And so for me, yeah. if I don't self-close, 
then I'm going to get a bunch of people that don't self close. So I remember the yeah. conversation, I'm like, dude, I'm in, just tell me the price and let me, let me do this thing. Um, yeah. and bam, like that. And I, I blew you off. Like I didn't want to like get on the phone. Cause I knew once I decided to get on the phone, it was a done deal. Right. And yeah. so yeah. I was having a conversation with this girl the other day and she was like, I'm like, what's going on? You haven't closed, you know, the last like four people. And she's like, well, the leads and you know, they, they just, there's a <laughs> lot of, hes- there's a lot of hesitation. And I'm like, and I stopped running her tracks. I'm like, where are you hesitating in your life? And she's like stunned, right? She's like, what kind of question is that? I'm like, where are you not taking action? She tears up, yep. right? She tears up because a question like smacked her in the face. And uh, mm-hmm. she's like, well, there's this decision that I, I know that I should make that I'm not. I'm like, make it and watch what happens. She makes it, bam, starts selling people. I'm like, it's just oh the projection. Gosh. These people are trying to teach you. A, these people are teaching you. A lot. So, if if you're not getting sales, it's not just like, oh, what's the overcome? I'm like, we can go over that over and over again. But I believe that like once she made the decision, it's like this quantum, um, you know, quantum physical crazy thing yep. that like happens where, you know, we start getting what we want. Yeah, it's like interstellar type stuff happening for sales. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's it's so true, <laughs> exactly. man. And I love, yeah, I love that you're saying this because um, with salespeople, they want to act as if what's happening outside is not affecting, you know, outside of the, their, their workspace won't affect the phone calls. And I'm like, maybe, maybe not for two weeks, maybe three weeks, who knows? But as anyone who knows this high performance functioning world, which if you're truly going to be a sales pro, I'm talking like at any level, even you, you're still a sales professional. You're just doing it in a different way. You're operating as it from a CEO now and, you know, and from a a very high Mm -hmm. level. But the reality is there will be a lag and it will catch up because your lead Uh indicators are what they are. It's the old, you know, ancient text of sowing and reaping. It just is what it is. I mean, I know we could go down this route, but I mean, we're, what we're seeing even in, in America right now is what it is from just the years that we have sown. And it's and, and, and you see these people and they're like, oh, it's lead flow and, and this and that. And it's like, oh, yeah, all of a sudden, all of the money in the world is just dried up. Yep, you're right. It's definitely happened. Four weeks ago, you know, we had all the money in the world, right? I mean, do you ever see that inside of your own team where they're like, oh, there's, you know, no one has any money. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, I mean, it's it's energy, right? Like, I mean, it, it's that that's the coolest part. I think true high performers that understand this mindset world, it's like everything can go on, like however it's going on, but it's like mm-hmm. that that doesn't have to be your reality. That's not delusion. That's like I choose to create this this representation of reality because that's what it is. Like another person's reality could be very different than mine. They could be like, yeah. like you said, there's no money out there. Nobody's willing to spend ten thousand dollars on fitness. I'm like, not my world. Like that, that, that's your world. Like I have people that have money all over the place right now. Right. And no matter what the economy does or who's president or what not, like I get to control what my reality is. And that like puts me in the driver's seat where most people are just unwilling to take that level of responsibility. It's far easier to look outside external blame external situations. I used to be like that, but when I finally took responsibility for everything, then I could truly win and I was free. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this then in the world that we're going into, obviously sales is affected, you know, by everything that's going on and businesses are, how are you perceiving, you know, as you're forecasting sales, as you're forecasting different things of that nature, how are you perceiving, um, what's next? Dude, I love it. I like, I mean, I'm super excited. So I'll tell you like in the fitness industry, if I'm just talking about the fitness industry, there's not a lot of competition where I'm playing at. And the reason is because you know, this uh, advertising on social is, is super expensive. And so there's a lot of people like scrambling at the bottom saying, I can't spend, you know, the, this amount of money to get leads or whatever. And for the past year, I've watched lead costs go up. However, we still crush and we crush even more because it's taking people out of the market. And so it's like, I'm playing my own game when everybody else is, is like jumping out based on their, you know, their reality of Facebook leads or Instagram leads being so expensive. And going forward, my clientele is CEOs, high performers, 
top level guys anyways. So they, like these people that are coming into superhuman are winners anyways. And so like my clientele is not the, not the people who are going to be worried about, you know, a $200 a month payment. That's not what we do. And so right. everybody that does that, I think they're going to get smoked. However, for us, yeah. I'm like, I'm talking to the CEOs who, who, and, and, you know, top level guys that like, they, they have enough money, right? They're going to have enough money. These guys are licking their chops at the market going like, hurry up and do this thing so that I can multiply what I've already saved up to, to do, right? The people who are yeah. going into this next little phase with intention, they're like, bring it on because I'm ready to multiply my wealth. That's my client. Yeah. Which if people were your client and they could adapt everything that you've said from mindset, uh, physical, uh, mental, emotional, all of that, that, you know, you guys teach over there, then they wouldn't not only ever really day to day be struggling or thinking about that, but they definitely wouldn't be thinking like, Oh man, I need to start bunkering down because when they start thinking and they start hearing the news and they're, you know, being pounded by the, you know, fake news and they're getting pounded. Now all of a sudden they start doing this, right? And then all, and then guess what's happening on their phone calls. This is showing mm -hmm. up because now they start becoming Dude, needy because then they're, Oh my God, they're operating from scarcity mindset. And it's like, what the hell? You can't do that. You, you, a, you can't do that for the business that you're serving. You definitely can't do that for you. Cause it's not going to get you anything. Right. Scarcity, scarcity begets more scarcity, man. And so it, it is, it's oh. fascinating to me to see how, how collectively and, and, and how fast that, that, collective scarcity can can happen where you're absolutely right man like you have to be in a prosperity mindset or you're going to get smoked and it's hard to do when all the input is of scarcity input meaning news right like all the all the stuff you're going to read headlines and but it's not just like one headline it's like every time you open up your phone now it's like bombarding you and so that's programming yeah. programming a person's reality right so what i do i walk through the day and when someone says something that I don't like or whatever, I don't want to believe in, I literally t say to myself, reject. Someone comes over to my house and they start talking about being sick or whatever. Like immediately I tell my unconscious mind to reject that thought. Yeah. I read, I read something on the newspaper. I'm like, reject. That's not, that's not my reality. There's money everywhere. I live in North mm -hmm. Scottsdale. There's Lambos driving around everywhere. Like there's money everywhere. What would you say to somebody who's listening right now and is just like, oh, man, he's just talking woo-woo or, oh, I don't know. How, like, how does that really work? Because I can easily be like, yeah, I'm with you. But, like, that's because I am aware of that. But what would you say to somebody who's just like, ah, oh, this dude doesn't know? Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, you know, you, you can believe what you want to believe. And then we, you know, ultimately will compare results if, if, if um you know, you want to be reactionary or you want to be proactive from a scientific standpoint, I would say without getting super detailed, I mentioned it earlier, but if you just can imagine your unconscious, like we can probably agree that there's a conscious part of your brain and an unconscious part of you, right? Right. And so this unconscious part of you carries out the day-to-day -day stuff. It regulates all of your bodily functions. You don't have to think about how many times you're blinking until I bring it up to your consciousness. It's all being handled. Right. And so what that what I'm saying is 400 billion bits of information we're taking in at all times. Right. 400 billion bits. Consciously, yep. we can only handle 200,000. Right. And so what that 200,000 is being shown to us is what our internal values, belief systems, limitations are. So everything that our unconscious mind deems important to us, because that's what we're focused on. That's what we, sh that's what shows up in our reality. So most people let that input of all that other negative stuff be played out on their mind. And so it's like, oh yeah, it's like reminded every second. It's like, make sure that's brought up to the, brought up to the conscious mind, right? It's like mm -hmm. the newspaper said that there's the economy's crashing and this and that. And then every single thing else that is, that would be around you, you're like picking that up and you're seeing it more and more. And so we all have this uh, reticular activating system, right? And this reticular ac activating system works like this. If you go and you, you know, test drive a Porsche Cayenne and you love it, right? And you're like, man, I want to get one of these. And then you drive yeah. home and you see five other Porsche Cayennes. You're like, dude, I never yes. seen this in my life. <laughs> and it's like, were they there always or were they not there? 
right? And, it, and my answer is like, they were always there, but because you drove it, you felt it, you got emotionally involved in it, right? All of a sudden your reticular activating system notifies you. It's not blocking that out in that 400 bits. It's bringing it up to that 200,000 that you deem important right now. And so what I do is I program what I want instead of focusing on what I don't want so that I'm yeah. more likely to be aware of all the opportunity and possibility that shows up everywhere where everybody else is going to find lack and limitation. Oh. God, this is so good, dude. This is like we do not have enough time to go to, into actually the freaking depth of what you're talking about. And like, this is why people need to like engage with you. But can I I'll share, try can to I do share one example before we go? Can I share one? Example? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Okay, one example. There was a study, psych, psychologist did this study, I think his last name was Wiseman. But anyways, he wanted to, he, he grouped two groups of people who self identified as lucky or unlucky. The lucky group mm. would be like, hey, if $1,000 fell from the sky, that would fall right into my lap. Unlucky group would be like, no matter what happens, I never win any drawings, I never win, it's always, you know, going to go to somebody else, like I'm not lucky. And so they had these two groups. And what they wanted to see is, is, would that affect their actual reality when it comes to opportunity. And so what they did is they planted a $20 bill in plain sight and they had a person, they had these groups like walk by and they wanted to see how many people would pick up that $20 bill, right? Because we were like, it's in plain sight, we're all seeing through our eyes, right? And what no. they found is over 90% of the people who found the $20 bill identified as lucky. And so all the people who believed that they were unlucky couldn't see opportunity if it was right in front of their face because they they had this self limiter in their unconscious mind what they did like your unconscious mind deemed it it not important for you to see that twenty dollar bill so it's blocked out it's distorted generalized and deleted where the unlucky people opportunity and possibilities everywhere so for me i'm going to stay in that frequency of opportunity possibility and prosperity so that my unconscious mind brings relevant stuff up for me to find opportunity everywhere. And so that's something that every person can program into themselves. My gosh, this is why I, I tell people, especially high functioning performers or sales pros, I'm like, you, you gotta have like a morning something. I don't care if you're a night owl, if you are starting the day at whatever time you start the day, you need to have some type of programming setting yourself up and then checkpoints throughout the day because you're, I mean, you're dead on. I, I've, I've heard studies like this happen. I've, I mean, I've, I study this stuff as well. And I'm just like, it's so powerful. Even see the other day I was, I was chatting with Taylor and I said, and I, and I said something we were talking about it and he goes, he goes, well, I want to do this. And I think we could charge X amount. And I was like, oh, we can't. Now I, I knew I wasn't saying we weren't able to do that. It's that I was processing everything we would have to fix to be able to do that. But the problem is he goes, no, remember, we don't do that. And I was like, oh, yeah, because even that little bit of saying, OK, how can we do that? Mm -hmm. And then you uh, talk out the things that you have to do because facts don't have feelings. There are things that have to be adjusted before you can do some things in life. But if you program your mind of saying how as opposed to, no, we can't, and then work through why you can't, then you've actually discredited your, and, and dis, you know, uh, disqualified yourself from, from the get, right? So I absolutely love that. Okay, I don't want to go without doing this. I'm a young sales pro. I'm just getting into the game. What's your advice? It could be three things, 10 things, but what's your advice, somebody just getting into the game, into sales and business of that nature? I would, I would just stay with my ethos here. And I would say to absolutely set ridiculous standards for your physical fitness, that's going to take care of the physiology and then absolutely set excellent standards and procedures for your mental fitness, which is what we just talked about. So like you just said, I'd be like, represent excellence in everything that you do. And then absolutely uh, do everything you can to elevate your mental fitness, your understanding of human psychology, understanding how to do what I just said, which is weed out all the weeds, all the limitations, all, this, all the limiting beliefs. Because a lot of times those, those belief systems, those limitate, limiters, 
again, are lurking in that unconscious mind, and they may have been implanted there when you were seven years old or five years old. So figure out why you believe what you believe, rip out the limitation, and then put procedurally into place, how can I elevate that mental fitness? What that looks like for me is meditation uh, 30 minutes right when I wake up. From there, I listen to a recording of myself talking about my future self as it's happening. So all of my goals, I'm, I'm listening mm. uh, to this track, it's 10 minutes long. And then from there, I'm writing my goals down every single day. And so that's like mm. wiring my brain to focus on what I want. And I think that if you do those two things, you can take sales courses, you can learn objection overcomes, you can learn from people mm. that are rock stars in the sales world. But if you set that foundation of yourself in excellence physically and mentally, you're going to freaking crush if you go get the tactical stuff from guys who are awesome at the tactical stuff. Yeah, it's almost like setting set that foundation inside of you so that you can actually intake and absorb the tactics and the objection handling and all of that. And it's like, but give it give it good soil to be planted in by addressing you first. Right. So absolutely amazing. Okay. I like to end this way. Um, and, and I don't want to come off mentally negative. So you can say reject, but give me an example. This is for fun, right? Of either in the past, like the worst clothes you've ever had, or maybe the hardest clothes you've ever had to do like a, a fun failure that you were able to learn from. Dude, I, I wish I, I mean, I should have, I should have a ton of these, man. Um, that's a good question. I think that when I first started, right, I was charging prices, what I, what I believed you could charge in fitness. And so one of my limiting right. beliefs when I worked with someone was, John, you've got to raise your prices. And I'm like, you can't do that. In, just what you said. I'm like, you can't do that in fitness, <laughs> right? Like people are yeah. paying $250 a month. How am I supposed to charge, you know, six grand and they're, and you know, that, that was like prices way back. Right. And so I just remember yeah. those first couple calls. Like I'd almost. I almost wanted the people to no show me. And that's a like, who says that? <laughs> yeah. Like I wanted to make money on one hand, but I was so, I was so afraid to be like, drop the price at the end that I was almost hoping <laughs> yeah. they wouldn't show up. And so I can't remember the specific one, but I do know that those, you know, those price drops in the beginning were real shaky. And when people <laughs> decide they're like, uh, I still remember a couple of times they're like, Oh, awesome. Like, let's do it. And it was so easy. It would like shook my whole, reality of like what was possible i'm like <laughs> yeah i never ever considered that, that that would be that easy and so um i just think that i sucked a lot at first and um you know i was i was afraid just like some other salespeople probably are yeah yeah i get it i mean i remember the first time i collected 40 grand i mean 10 and 20 was fine but the first time someone was like yeah okay and they just put like 45 on a card and i was like snap you just got 45 grand space, which means, which, which yeah, means yeah. like all your bills are paid and you still got this space for 45 grand. And it's not an, you know, it's not like some real estate thing. And it, I was just like, Oh my God, I can ask for any amount of money and someone's going to have it. That's when I was like, yeah. let's go. This is going to be awesome. But, um, absolutely love today. Thank you so, so, so much. I think this is going to be one of those episodes where people literally have to just keep going back and listening to what you're saying. But um, for anyone who's interested, um, needs your advice, needs to sign up with you, whatever the case may be, um, obviously we'll put everything in the comments. But can you say now, where can they go to find you? How can they get in touch with you and your team to you know get their ish fixed? <laughs> Yeah, two places. I would say Instagram, number one, John Madsen official. There's that link tree. So you can, I have like 200 episodes podcast. If you want free information, there's a link on there to sign up for custom 100% um, custom coaching as far as fitness is concerned. So you can check out what we do there. And then if you just wanted to go to johnmadsen.com, there's also some information there as well, man. But yeah, I, I truly appreciate you having me on the show, man. It was awesome. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So we will make sure guys that it's in any, however you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube, you'll have access to those links. We'll put the, um, the handles in there, but John, again, I hope everybody just floods you and you have too many people and you say, turn off the episode. Uh, because I really do believe if people could, um, grab hold of what you're saying and leverage that, that the, 
the byproduct would just be sales galore or it'd be closed deals or it'd be new ventures or renewed partnerships or retention if they could really firm up their foundation internally and who they are. So again, thank you for today. You're an absolute legend. I cannot wait to come play a couple rounds with you out there uh, and it's going to be amazing. So uh, until then, guys, appreciate you. Um, obviously, like, love, do all the things that people like you to do. Um, the only thing I really actually ever ask is that you would simply just share this. If this rocked you, your world in any way, um, share it to somebody, even if they're not in sales. Maybe they just need to hear you know, what John was talking about. So all we ask again is just that you would just share it and uh, pass on the love. And until next time.